The series is called Anchored, looking for those stabilizing forces as we navigate relationships. I want to get right at it today, and I want to start out with this challenge that to improve your relationships, you must improve yourself. Let me point all the attention to me. It starts with me. If any of my relationships have the potential of getting better, then I must get better. I am the common denominator in every relationship that I have. I can't change anyone, but I can surrender to God and ask him to change me. And then I bring my best self into every relationship that I have thus raising the potential of that relationship improving. The Holy Spirit will help me. It starts with me. He'll help you. And that is the starting place for all relationships to get better. Now, God, his divine design was the family. That takes you back to the book of Genesis. Even before he put into place the church, he put the family in place. But when Adam and Eve fell from grace, things unraveled quickly. You know, they had sons, Cain and Abel. Cain became very jealous of this offering that Abel gave to God that was acceptable. And he became so jealous that he killed his brother. We're four chapters into the Bible, and we have the first murder in history. And it happened in a family. So that's kind of how the story starts. And I want you to see in Genesis, make one edit on your note card where it says Galatians. Strike through that and put Genesis chapter 4. Let me give you verses 6 and 7. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Do you see the common thread? God is saying, Cain, it starts with you. God is giving us here the principle of self-awareness. Jesus taught in his great sermon, the greatest sermon of all time, the Sermon on the Mount, the principle of self-awareness where he challenges me before I work on the speck in somebody else's life. I make sure I'm asking the Holy Spirit to deal with the issues in my life. The principle of self-awareness is where I'm saying, Lord, I want you to go to work and start with me. Number two, we need more than personal improvement. We need personal transformation. Improvement generally focuses on the outside, the outward. Transformation focuses on the inside. It's that internal deep work and help of the Holy Spirit that really makes us different people. I can put a smile on my face on the outside and have no joy on the inside. We're saying, Holy Spirit, work in me from the inside out so that the smile on my face is generated from a deep work of joy that's happening in my soul. So I want to give to you five important experiences that you need with God. And as they happen in you, it positions you to influence every relationship that you have. Here's the first one, salvation. To anyone in this room that is exploring, and I want to praise God that in our Alpha small group on the campus of TU last week, a young man accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. That is the best news. This young man was pursuing. He was inquiring. He he was exploring, and, and truth registered, and grace flooded his heart. So the first experience any of us need is that experience of being born again. What does that mean? It means your life has changed. 
You are not a physical being having a spiritual experience. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. Receive that and know that you must be born from the inside out. It's, it's an awakening of the essence of who you are. Very important for us always to focus on this because you can be raised in, in a place that's very religious and there's a lot of, a lot of like uh, talk about the Lord. I mean, we just had a major great event in our community over this weekend. How many people are gathered in churches today? Uh, in any direction, when you exit this parking lot, you will drive by many churches on your way home. The question is not an experience with church. Have you experienced salvation? Do you know Jesus? Have you been born again? Have you had your heart awakened by the grace of God? Ha and you say, how would I know? Well, one way is because if you are made alive, there's an appetite for anyone who is alive. And is there, a, is there an appetite now for the things of God? What does it mean? Paul said in 2 Corinthians, it means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. So see, that's transformation. This is the first experience you need because it changes you. Now you're set up to influence every relationship you have. It goes from there to what I call revelation and information. Put out beside that experience, Bible engagement. I'm calling you again to the scripture, to love the word of God, to read it, to internalize it. The statistics that we find over hundreds of thousands of people that were surveyed who read the Bible at least four times a week for 15 minutes a day the evidence is in. Relational bitterness dropped 40%. Alcoholism dropped 57%. Sexual sin dropped 58%. And feeling spiritually stagnant dropped 62%. The reason is because the Bible's inspired. It is alive. It is powerful. And the Spirit works with the Word. And it works from the inside out. And it produces transformation. And that's what you're seeing in those statistics. I want to put with this experience, you experience God through his word in dedication. By the word dedication, you would write consistency. Because as you are consistent with the word, change happens. Finish this with me if you can. You shall know the truth and the truth will. Bam. But. I want to show you the book of Romans because there's more to that verse than what we just quoted. Because you can know some truth and still not be experiencing the freedom of that truth. Because Paul or John wrote in chapter 8 verses 31 and 32, he says, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You see, consistency, internalizing the word, that is where the change starts happening. Let's add the book of James to this. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says, that's like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they've heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do the experience with the word of God is when you dedicate yourself to look into it intently continuously intently consistently change starts happening God starts talking to you about what is happening in your life. God starts correcting, convicting, encouraging. God starts uncovering. The light of his word starts shining and you get wisdom. And this wisdom is the wisdom of God. And that wisdom starts breaking old patterns 
and that wisdom starts developing and building new patterns and you walk as a transforming follower of Jesus. Come on, somebody. We can change as we experience Jesus through his word, consistently seeking him through it. Here is the fourth experience. It's the experience of inner healing. Every one of us at some point will need God's help for those things that wound us, that wound the soul. We'll need that grace of God that can heal a broken heart. He was bruised, the stripes upon his back, that we might find freedom in those areas of pain and brokenness. Over a period of time, if we don't process these things with the Lord, I, I, I feel like I'm saying this for somebody very specifically. If we don't process those things with the Lord, the pain will ac accumulate. And you will bring that into every relationship that you have. There is no husband who can heal you. There is no wife who can heal you. Having kids will not heal you. Another friend will not heal you. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your friends. But Jesus is the healer. And I want you to turn your heart to him. Pastor Jonathan so clearly called us to turn to the presence of God. Turn your heart, turn your relationships, turn your pain, turn to the presence of God and let Jesus be your healer, be your helper, be what Psalm 147.3 says. And I just prophesied this, I'm speaking God's word over this house today. Receive it if you need it. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. I sense it deep in my heart. This is what the Lord was saying. I want to help people today. I want to help people. Let him help you as the healer. The fifth experience is that of God's power to live, love, and lead like Jesus requires the power of Jesus. We need his power because we know ourselves. We need his power because we know we have an enemy that is set against us to destroy us. The enemy comes like a thief, the Bible says. To distract, to discourage, to divide, and to destroy. Imagine a war room and there is Satan who is strategizing, looking over the circumstances of your current reality and figuring out how he might best attack and attack with success. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that we are fighting against him. The fight is not with flesh and blood enemies. Amen? But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. The unseen world is as real as the seen world. We're up against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Evil rulers, mighty powers, and evil spirits. We have a force against us, and it is all under the direction of Satan himself. But there is a power greater than the power of evil spirits, mighty powers. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of Jesus. It's the power of the blood. 
It's the power of the word. So picking up the verse, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor. Notice that. Not our armor, not self-improvement, but transformation. Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm because God's power is greater than the power of the enemy. Take a minute and praise God that you're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. I say that over this house today. We have the resources. Paul said in Corinthians that our resources, as a matter of fact, I listed it for you. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. We have been given weapons to do battle spiritually, and they're not carnal. One translation says they're not human. They're supernatural. They are, they are from the Lord. They're supernatural to the pulling down of every lie, of every stronghold, of any and everything that would set itself up against what is true, God's best for you, how God sees you, what God wants for you, you can overcome. You're on the winning side. Have an experience with the power of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in his presence. Galatians chapter 5 continues to teach us about the role of the Holy Spirit and his power in our lives. As we are cultivating this relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit produces that change in us. And he produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Can we just say all of those together? Fill the room with what the Holy Spirit will produce in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the kind of friend you can be. That's the kind of husband, the kind of wife, the kind of son, the kind of daughter. That's the kind of people that we can be. We are the thermostat. We are not a thermometer. We are bringing something into every relationship we have. And if I bring my best self where the Holy Spirit is producing change in me, the kind of fruit that you see listed, then every relationship I have has the potential of getting better. God didn't, didn't create relationship so that they would just barely make it. Come on, your relationships are to be awesome. So awesome for you that they become a statement to people that are watching you that God is awesome because they see him in your interaction with other people. Let God give you a fresh vision of relationships that are designed to flourish because you are flourishing, because you are thriving, you are growing. And so that's what you bring. You know why, why we are having an awesome service today? Because there are some people who came, let me say it from the psalmist, they entered with praise. They entered with praise. They entered his gates with thanksgiving. We came to say people will come from every direction of this community. People will come with burdens and struggles. And we're going to go with all of our heart in worship to the name that is above every single name. And we're going to say things, we're going to say things like this, may I never lose the wonder of this relationship, of this friendship, my God, and that he's holy, he's set apart, he's God, there is no other. 
and he's holy forever. And his name is the highest. Come on. His name is the greatest. And we said this atmosphere will be marked with the presence of God. This building is just a building. The reason there's something special here is because the people of God are here. That's the reason. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's number three. There's hope for you in your relationships. It starts with me, and I need God. And God's available. As the worship team comes, I show you Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus said, just come to me. And I felt impressed to really encourage people who may be relationally weary. Come to Jesus. Turn that weariness to Jesus. That weariness can be from a variety of things that are happening in, within relationships. A relationship that is strained. A relationship that is broken. One that's become adversarial. Or someone you love is struggling there is no, no burden heavier than the relational burden. We're carrying that burden for a spouse, a son, a daughter, a mom, or a dad. It's a heavy burden. And Jesus says, turn it to me. Come to me. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you rest. Because God says that his, I love this, his yoke is easy, like he's coupled with us, and his burden is light. This is where we learn to turn to the Lord, and, and he bears the burden. The help of the Lord is here. I want you to stand with me and I want to be so careful to in this closing time which we have plenty of time to allow now the, the spirit to confirm this in your heart and impact this in your life in the way you need it here in a moment I'm going to ask anybody who wants to just turn their heart to Jesus that's me it's going to be a whole lot of people in this room I know Jesus as my Savior, but I'm, I'm turning to Him not for salvation. I'm turning to Him for more of Him through His Word, more of Him in my mind. Kelly and I, since last weekend, we, we just doubled down and said more, we're going to be more passionate for God than ever. We're going to turn to the Word. We're going to turn to prayer. We're going to turn to worship. We're going to walk in this. And so I just want us as a church family, let's turn to Jesus today. You may need to turn to him for salvation. You may need to turn to him in fresh dedication and surrender. You may need to turn to him for inner healing. You may need just the fresh power of God to help you fight those battles you're fighting right now. And as we come together around this altar, you know what? We'll... We'll fight the devil together. We'll pursue God together. As brothers and sisters, we will seek the Lord. Now you can experience God right where you're standing. You don't have to come forward. But I want to invite you to, and this altar area is going to fill up. And across this place, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to be very personal and very specific in our lives today.